It's a new year. Amen. God has kept us and brought us to a new year. Can somebody give him praise for that this morning? Amen. We're in a new year. And I want to talk to you just for a few minutes this morning. We've got baptism, and I just want to take just a few minutes this morning to talk to you about looking forward to the new thing. The Scripture says that God is doing a new thing. Amen. How many of you got something new for Christmas? Any little thing, whatever it might have been. Might have been some candy. Might have been some switches. I don't know what it was, but something new for Christmas. And how we love to share with our family. And we love to partake in that season. But God has something new for you in 2024. There's something about this year. I don't know what it is. We've shared that with you already. A couple of different prophecies have come forth about that. But there is something about this year. Amen. We're going to go to Philippians 3 and 13. <clears throat> This morning, Philippians 3 and 13. Paul is talking here and he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press, somebody say press, toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Paul says here the only way to have victory, the only way to have victory in the spirit and over the flesh is to number one, forget the past. Forget the past. 2023 is gone. It's in the history books. It'll never be repeated again. We won't ever, ever, ever live 2023 over again. But how many of you know that there's so many people who walk around and they're still living in 1985? Amen. Because of something that happened and something that was said and something that was done and they've drugged that year after year after year from last year to this year and then next year they'll pull it and drag it again off into the next year. But I want to talk to you this morning about the new, God wants to do something new. Amen. Something new. But Paul said, I, number one, forget the past. Forget it. Reach for the future. I reach forward to what God has. Reaching forward to not what my ideas are, not what I want, not what I, I'm chasing in my flesh, but I reach forward to what God has to the future. And number three, he said, I press toward the call of God. I stay in relationship with Jesus Christ. I press. How many of you know Paul would not be talking about pressing if he wasn't meeting opposition? You're not going to press against something that is not pressing back. So I can tell you, if you're going to go forward in the Lord, you're going to have to press a little bit. You're going to have to press mostly against your own self. You're going to have to press against your mind and renew it by the Word of God. You're going to have to press through what Satan has put there to keep you held back and keep you imprisoned to your past. So we've got to move past the past. Can somebody say amen? Move past it. Quit looking back. Can I tell you something? God will never consult your past to determine your future. Ever. Never. We're going to have baptism here in a little bit. I want to tell you, the old man and the old woman's going down in a watery grave, and the new is going to rise up, amen, as, as, as symbolic of being buried in Christ and raised a new creature, amen. And that's what we're celebrating this morning because God has done something new in Josh and Gibson and Charlene. He has done something new. Can somebody say amen? He's done something new, and he's got more to go. Amen. He don't run out. He will never consult your past to determine your future. I want you to think this morning about our expectations that we have. I'm not talking about expectations of 
what we can accomplish or what we're going to do this year. Resolutions are kind of like dust on your feet. They'll stick to you for a minute and then they're going to wipe off on something else. It'll be gone. Amen. I'm talking about something that's deeper than a resolution. I'm talking about something that is a change on the inside that creates character on the outside. A new thing. Amen. I'm looking forward and pressing forward. I want to take just a second. I'm not going to go to this scripture, but I, I just I, when I reference it, any of you who's been in church, hardly any at all, you'll recognize what I'm talking about in the book of Genesis where Lot is in so him, his family's in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the angel goes and tells them, you need to get out and get out now. God's going to destroy this city because of wickedness. And so they gather together and they start out and they leave. And I want you to, you can go and read this. I've got the scriptures. I'll give them to you. But for time's sake, we're not going to read all of that this morning. But the word says that they left. And God's instruction was, don't do what? Look back. I feel like God's instructing somebody today. Too many years have gone by. And you're doing this. Over regret. Over pain and what might have been and could have been and should have been. and Coulda, shoulda, woulda. But it's gone. It's as gone as it'll be a hundred years from now. It's gone. Fifteen minutes or fifteen years is still the past. It's the past. It's gone. God wants to do something new. Brand new. Hallelujah. And God's instruction was don't look back. And the word says that Lot left and he entered into the city of Zor alone. For years and years, I thought that Lot's wife was destroyed simply for looking back. And that's not, read the scripture and you'll understand. She not only looked back, but she stayed back. When Lot entered Zor, he was alone. I want to encourage you this morning, you go on with God if you have to go alone. If you want to be saved, I'm telling you right now, get a hold of something. If you're looking for a spouse, if you're looking for, you better look for somebody who's already found God. Amen. You don't want to have to be dragging and pulling and begging and pleading and, 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 and I, I won't even get off on all that. Looking back and tugging and... But he entered Zor alone. And the Bible says that she was destroyed along with. See, she walked out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, but Sodom and Gomorrah was still in her. And some folks walk out, walk up and receive the Lord. But they want to go back and try to take the Lord back to where they used to be. And God don't live there. Sometimes God's trying to destroy something to set you free. And you want to live a little bit too close to the line. And he's saying, get out. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy it. Sometimes... I just got to know that I have to go if I have to go by myself. If God said go, I'm going. I want you to go. I want, you, I want everybody under the sound of my voice to be saved and filled with the Spirit of God so that we can go to heaven together. But I've made up my mind, brothers and sisters, where you go or whether you don't, I'm going. My mind is made up. A lot of folks' problems today is their mind ain't made up. Amen. Her mind was made up that she would get out but stay close. She stepped out of the city 
But she stayed close and she still had enough unbelief in her that she had to look one more time and was destroyed for that. I'm looking forward to what God has. I'm looking forward. How about you? Looking forward. Hallelujah. If God hasn't completely destroyed that thing, you know, the angel said, get out, and God's not going to destroy this city lot until you're out. If God hasn't completely destroyed that thing that keeps pulling you back and pulling you back and pulling you back, maybe he's waiting on you to get out. When you leave it, it'll be destroyed and it won't have dominion over you anymore. When you finally leave that alone, it won't have dominion over you anymore. That's not popular, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Praise you, Jesus. If you don't move forward with God, you will go backwards. Because, see, God's not still. He tells us to be still and know that he's God. But God is a moving God. He is a consuming fire, the word says. A consuming fire. That when we go and we trust him and we walk with him and we stay with him, he gives us victory. When we mind him and we do what he says to do, he has a plan, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I, ha I know the plans I have for you. Do you know he's got perfect plans for you? We try to plan out the year. I'm going to be, I'm going to pay this off and I'm going to do this and I'm going to spend this. I'm going to fix this. I'm, gonna, I'm finally going to do this this year and this year and this year. But I wonder if we ever stop to think about God's plan for us spiritually. What is his plan? I can tell you it's for you to glorify him. To glorify him. Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. And he said he summed up Ecclesiastes by saying this. He said now we're at the end of the matter. And just to sum it all up. He said I've done everything. I've not kept anything from myself. And it was just all vexation of spirit. Nothing was worth anything. It's not going to matter when we stand before the Lord. He said it's just not going to matter. But to sum it all up. He said, man's only duty, man's full duty is to serve God. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. And I'm looking forward to the new thing. Look at somebody and say, I've come too far to look back. There's an old song that says there's nothing behind me worth going back to. There is nothing behind me that I care to go back to. I don't want a repeat of my past at all. I don't want to dwell on it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about and when I, I, I don't want to think about somebody else's past. I want to forgive and move on. I don't want to think about it. How many of you know you can feel good and you can start looking back and it won't be long till you down in the mully grubs? Because you know why? Because you can't change that. The only thing I can change is tomorrow. Right now and tomorrow. That's all I can change. Hallelujah. I've come too far. Whew. There's an old song. Some of you young folks don't know who the Goodmans are, but look them up. And it just says, I don't regret a mile that I've traveled for the Lord. You know how I can say that? It ain't because I hadn't messed up. 
It's not because I hadn't made a mess. It's not because I hadn't had to ask the Lord for forgiveness over and over and over and over. But you know why I don't regret a mile I've traveled for him is because of his faithfulness. He has proven himself faithful. He will do what he said he will do. But you know when he will do that? It's when I trust him enough to leave the past behind and look forward to what he has for me. I wish somebody would think about the place that you moved from. I moved from a place of misery and sin and walking the floors at night. Wanting, I, 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 how many of you know you get in a mess and you just beg God to forgive you and I won't never, I'll never do that again, I'll never do that again. And the next thing you know, right there you are all over again. Because it takes the supernatural power of the blood of Jesus applied to cause a true repentance and a true change in a person's life. You can't just make up your mind to turn over a new leaf because when the wind blows, it'll flip right back over. But it's a God thing. I don't live when Satan tempts me to look back. I don't live there anymore. I left. Sometimes all we need to do is remind him that we left. You're still back there, devil, but I ain't. I've left there. I've moved on with the Lord. I've got a future. It's bright. And there's a reason why he keeps trying to drag us backwards. It's because he don't want you to have what God has purposed for you to have. He don't want you to have hope. He don't want you to know that there's hope and there's a plan and God has good things for you. He don't want you to think that. He wants to depress you and pull you back and drag you down and keep you tied. But I'm so thankful that Jesus, when he rose from that grave, he came up victorious over death, over hell, and the grave. So none of those things have dominion over you and me as long as we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm not that person anymore. Sometimes if we would just tell him you don't, I don't know who you're talking to. Who is she? She's been dead since December the 6th of 1992. You talking to somebody dead. I don't live there anymore. I'm not the same person. I rose up a new creature. I don't live there anymore. The old man is dead. Anybody know who Dale Way is? The old man is dead. Look him up too. I thank God that he is. I was washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. And I went down to a watery grave in baptism. Amen? In baptism. And came up a new creature. And I want to tell you right now, when I came up, I came up like Jonah. I was so ready. I was so ready to run. I wanted to, I'm telling you, it's like Samson setting them foxes' tails on fire. I mean, I was on fire. I wanted everybody that my eyes could see to be saved, to experience what it was like. I think what happens in church is we have dumbed it down and nulled it down, and we're so afraid we, we got to be so dignified, and we got to be, and oh, we don't want them folks in here. Well, they don't want to be. There's lots of folks don't want to come. Because they think, folks think they're better than them. But for the blood of Jesus, 
Sin is sin is sin is sin. And it will all send us to hell. Amen. It don't matter what it is. If it's sin, it won't be in heaven. And we won't go if we're not under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Everybody dies, but not everybody goes to heaven. That's another misconception. No, there is a heaven and there is a hell. The old folks used to say there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. And you better know that both of them are very, very real. I'm looking forward. I ain't got time to look back. I'm, I'm fixing to be 56 years old in April. I ain't got time. We need to tell the devil well, I ain't got time for all that. I ain't got time to be worried about what I wish I'd have done, what, what should have happened, or holding a grudge against. I don't have time. I'm looking forward to what God has for me. I've experienced the faithfulness of God. I've experienced it. You've come too late to tell me he's not faithful. He's faithful. Can I get a witness? Will he do what he says he will do? Amen. He is faithful to do what he says. What this book says, you can take it to the bank. Amen. And I don't mean Renaissance or the bank course town. I'm talking about the bank of heaven where he said he would open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And I'm not talking about U.S. dollars. I'm talking about when my kids need a healing, when my kids have strayed or act like they ain't never heard of God. I'm talking about a blessing where he'll reach down through the devil's grip and untie them and set them free and let them go free and say because mama prayed and daddy prayed and because I took a stand against him I don't care if you think I'm radical I don't care what you think amen I have come too far to look back I have come too far I have experienced the faithfulness of God I've seen him do the impossible I have seen him fix situations that absolutely should have destroyed. God is, I wish you'd say it this morning, God is faithful. Woo, he's faithful. I may not always be faithful, but he's faithful. You may not, can, don't you ever put your whole 110% trust in a man or a woman. I will hurt you and not mean to. I will let you down. But there's one whose name is Jesus. He will never let you down. You will always be able to depend on him. He's faithful. Yes, he is. I've been through the valley and I've been on the mountain. There's another old song. Y'all know we like to sing and I like everything. John tells Ben all the time, my Lord, you can talk about a dog and think of a song to go right along with it. But the God on the, I have found wherever I am. Wherever you are, you know you've heard the saying, well, if you ain't happy with yourself, you're in trouble because wherever you are, there you are. But when you're under the blood of Jesus, wherever I am, there he is. When I was in the valley, there he was. When I was on the mountain, sometimes didn't even take time to look around and see he was there. See, we look for him when we're in the valley. We start looking for him when we're down. Need some relief. Need some help. But sometimes we're on, when we're on that valley, we don't look around long enough to see the faithfulness of God. Y'all hear me say a lot sometimes that experience breeds confidence. When you have experienced God, you're going to have confidence in Him. You have experienced something that has never let you down. 
if you buy something and every time you've bought it, it has, it has worked for you and worked for you, you're not going to go buy something else. You're going to keep trusting what you can trust. I ain't looking because there ain't nothing else like Jesus. No need of me looking back because I can tell you back there ain't worth my time to look back to. Hallelujah. I've experienced his faithfulness. Been stressed and pressed. (laughs) Paul said, I press toward the mark. When I, when everything in me wants to look back, when everything in me, because some days Y'all quiet. Some days are harder than others. Some days it's a struggle. Some days you might as well but tell the truth. Some days it's a struggle. I don't care how holy that you are. Some days it's a struggle for me to keep my mouth shut. Some days it's a struggle for me not to say the wrong thing. Some days it's a struggle for me not to do the wrong thing because we deal with this flesh. And Paul said, I press toward the mark. There's a mark that I'm pressing for. That mark is the will of God. I'm pressing toward that mark. I'm going to get there. I've made my mind up that I'm seeing God's will in my life, in my children's life, in my grandchildren's life. And the Bible says, and every generation as long as the Lord shall tarry, Every one of them, I'm claiming them for the kingdom of God. The devil can't have them. I'm standing in the gap. I'm praying and covering generation after generation after generation. You say, well, that's crazy. You can't do nothing about what they choose. No, I can't. But I can tell you I can attack the gates of hell on their behalf through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And he alone is worthy. And he alone can win that battle. I trust him. Do you trust him? I trust him. Yes, I do. I've come too far to look back. Hallelujah. There's a harvest and it's ahead. It's not behind There's a harvest for you in your life. Amen. There's a harvest. God has a harvest for you. He has things that he wants to give you. I'm not talking about houses and that too. He he blesses us and we have so much more than what we even deserve. But there's a harvest that he has. God has brought us to 2024. 2023 has ended. Isaiah 43 and 15 says this. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Right here it is. Behold, I will do a what? A new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall shall you not know it? Can you not know something down on the inside of you? Can you not feel the Holy Spirit nudging you this morning with hope saying, He's got something good for me. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Rivers in the desert. You ever seen a river in a desert? Not physically. I ain't ever even seen the desert, but... Never heard of, it's a desert because it is deserted and there's no water. But he said, on your behalf, when I do this new thing in your life, the things, I'm not going to, 
part the Red Sea. You're not going to come to a Red Sea for me to part that for you again. I'm not going to do the same old thing that I've done. I'm going to do something new. This time, there's not going to be a sea to part, but when you need water, you're not going to have to strike a rock to get it. He said, I'm just going to pour it out and I'll make rivers in the desert where there has been nothing. So if there's a dry place in your life, if there's a dry, you feel like you've been dried up, Dry spiritually. We all go through those times, but if you feel like you've been dry spiritually, he said, get ready, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm fixing to pour out on you and I'm going to make you a water. I love the scripture that says we will be like the trees by the river of life and we'll be watered and springing up. That's the plan he has for you. Not to be desolate and depressed and down and discouraged. He has something new for you. He said, don't even think about or remember. Look, I'm doing a new thing. You can't look back and move forward. You cannot move back and look forward. You ever tried to put your car in drive? And turn around and look backwards and drive forward. You will wreck your car. People are trying to do that in the spirit. They say I'm moving forward. And they're always doing this. And they're in a spiritual wreck. Because it is impossible. What we put our eyes on is where we're moving. What we set our focus on is where we're going to end up. Always. Every time. If you're driving and you look at the ditch, hang on. You'll be down there. Every time. And it's the same way spiritually. Let's get our minds set on the Lord. We are to expect. Expect. When this word says it, you can believe it. You can find out what the Lord says. I wish you'd take the scripture to him, Jeremiah 29, 11, and say, God, would you show me? I want to live out your plan, not mine. I don't want to be anxious about what am I going to do about this, what am I going to do about that? How's that going to work out? Can I do this? Lord, am I going to have a spouse in 2024? I have been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I have been praying, and I have been praying, and I have been praying. And the Lord said, leave the past. Look to the new thing. Keep me first. And I know the plans that I have for you. To prosper you. To bring you peace. And to bring you to an expected end.